Okay, today I'd like to show you a little bit about how to rescue uh, a starter that has not been fed, not been maintained properly, and it's not very well. Now, right below me here, I have uh, a bit of sacrilege, and we don't have smell o vision but I can tell you right now that the smell in this container is pretty rank. It smells a bit like a dead rat. Um, what's in there is a portion of a 150 year old dough starter that I've maintained in one form or another for the last probably four years. Um, now this starter has deliberately been left to get mouldy and disgusting because lots of my students say, oh, I've killed my starter uh, and I need to replace it. Now, actually, it's very hard to kill starter. Uh, as you can see, this particular starter is a dough consistency. That means that it's two parts flour to one part water as opposed to your usual liquid starter. Now, the reasons for that are multiple, but basically I prefer a dough starter because it's easier to live with. Now, what I'm going to do as I'm going to take away some of the mold that's on the outside. You can see it's all green and blue and coloured, like so. And underneath it, you'll notice that there's good looking, healthy starter. And all of that's pretty much mold. And you'll notice also that. This, the healthy starter looks a lot like dried compressed yeast for those of you who once have used such a thing. See that? It's very flaky and nice. Now, the smell of that particular starter, the, the bit that's not mouldy, is quite sweet. Okay, so there's a lovely example of untended starter. Alright, so right here we have what's left, pretty much. Now, I'm going to take that chunk there. You see this is all the festy stuff, which I've removed. Now that, that festy stuff can go into the compost. Now I'm just having a little look around on the back side here to see if there's any more potential mouldy issues. I'm just removing them. Don't have to be too too fussy, and yes, you can use a knife to do this. I'm, I'm so used to it; it's really not an issue. And human bacteria is very, very good to have in a starter. Okay, so that's the remaining chunk of starter. What I'm going to do with that? So I'm going to put it in this here container, uh, and I'm going to call what's left in this useless. So here's my remaining starter. When you're healing a starter, you need to be mindful of the fact that it's very fragile. What I have in this container I'm about to pour into it is 500 mils <coughs> of rainwater. So I'm lucky, I live in the bush and we have rainwater tanks, so the water's quite pure. But uh, if you live in the city, then I would recommend using a charcoal filter of some description or just buying some distilled water or pure water. Um, if your starter's like mine and it's pretty tough, it'll probably cope with chlorinated water. But it's probably better to be safe than sorry, particularly when you've got a starter that's in this poor condition. So I've got that water in there now. I'm just going to leave it to stand for a minute or two. I'm going to help it to hydrate just using a nice stiff whisk. Now there's still a few lumps left in there, 
but um, good enough for our purposes. What I have here is a kilogram of rye meal. This particular starter has always, for its 150 year life, been fed on rye flour. It originally came from Germany. So that's been its food. You can feed your starter with almost any, any grain. So wheat, rye, spelt, kumut, whatever suits. Uh, you can see that it's quite a thick, thick mixture. And my, my beta here is gummed up pretty well straight away. So let's go. Clear it up a bit. Alright, now what's left is going to be our dough starter. And all you need to do is get, get all the flour and water to introduce to each other, like so. Remember, you want it to be a consistency of dough. So, remember 500 ml of flour, sorry, 500 ml of water, and a kilogram of rye meal. If you use, say, flour, a bit of whole wheat in the flour or whole meal of any kind, whether it's wheat, rye, or whatever, is going to be a good food. For your starter because it contains more natural yeast than a white flour. That's not to say that you can't feed it with white flour. I've done that for years and years, 100% white flour starters, and they, they're fine. But in terms of medicine, we're talking about sick starter here, starter that's unwell, not starter that's dead then a whole grain is better because of the yeasts. All right, well, we're nearly done. All I want to do is get that to combine. You can see all this waste stuff to one side of the camera. That's going to get put in the compost. The smell of this nice clean starter that came from the center of the previous one is very very nice indeed and you could use this starter in a day or two once it's ripened up. Now I'll just say one thing before I finish and that is bear in mind that what you're seeing here is a commercial volume a dough starter or also known in Finnish as DESEM, D-E-S-E-M, that's a commercial volume. So I can make, with that amount of starter there, I could make many hundreds of loaves of bread. That's the beautiful thing about a dough starter. You will need at home much, much less than this. So instead of 500 mils of water and a kilo of flour, as I've added here, you may be feeding your starter with 50 mils of water and 100 grams of flour. So just bear, the, bear in mind that your measurements will be somewhat smaller than mine. I was just interested in showing you how to redeem your starter. Now that starter right there, that's back in action. Beautiful, nice and clean. I can uh, either leave that out of the fridge overnight and let it ripen, or I can put it in the fridge and let it ripen up slowly over a number of days. That's it. How to save your starter.